Hey, what's up everyone? All right. Um, I just wanted to talk to you guys about a very, very uh, important topic for anyone that owns an aluminium boat or is thinking of buying an aluminium boat. Um, I basically want to teach you uh, what I know about what can uh, go wrong with aluminium. Um, and I want you to be really scared about this, to be honest. So, um, because I want you to, to know the warning signs, know what to do, where you stand, all that sort of stuff. Um, and look, I'll tell you now, I am not a, a scientist, so uh, I don't know the science uh, behind this. I'll be coming from this from the point of view of uh, what I've seen uh, and experienced uh, only. And I'll explain it uh, the best <clears throat> the way I can. All right, so what we're talking about here is basically alloy boat, plate alloy boats, uh, uh, oxidation, um, corrosion, uh, those type of things. So, you know, when you go buy a brand new uh, alloy boat, go buy a brand new shiny plate alloy boat, you get it home and the alloy looks so good that it almost <clears throat> looks like chrome it shines so amazingly well uh, i'm here to tell you that it absolutely does not stay like that and um just sort of tell you uh what to expect and what can happen and can even go wrong if you don't maintain that alloy properly okay so firstly what is it um oxidization um Basically, it is an uncoated aluminium surface, for example, uh, when it comes into contact with air and the elements, etc., it will get almost like a white kind of film over the top of the, the surface, um, or, or that, that cr almost chrome looking plate alloy will go dull, it will go uh, grey. So that's basically what oxidisation is. Um, galvanic corrosion, I think it, that's what it's called, uh, is effectively a corrosion when um, uh, a part of uh, the aluminium will basically um, corrode or, or eat, look like it's eating itself away um, in a localised area. Um, typically it'll be when uh, the aluminium is in contact with another uh, metal. <clears throat> uh, so it's a localised thing, basically, where oxidisation, uh, oxidation, sorry, um, will be over, can be over your entire boat, for example. Um, e electrolysis uh, can be identified by... Um, it can typically be identified to, again, like localised area, like small spots, small patches. Um, it can be identified by, for example, paintwork bubbling up uh, on your boat. There's a chance you've got electrolysis under there. Um, the other one I want to talk about is something that is called pitting. And, and I don't see this often talked about, but this is basically when you have little dots, like little localised holes basically forming in your aluminium. So they're kind of like pin hole size little dots. And this is one I want you guys to pay particular attention to. So oxidation, galvanic corrosion, electrolysis, pitting, um, are they, I guess they're all forms of, of corrosion, um, broadly speaking. All right, so how are they caused? So the oxidation um, is really just caused uh, by air. Uh, the aluminium coming into contact with, uh, you know, the environment and air and water and whatever. Um, galvanic corrosion is caused when two uh, metals made up of different chemical compounds basically have a, a chemical reaction to each other. So, particularly um, in aluminium boats, you never want any steel or stainless steel ever in contact with the aluminium directly. There should always be something in between. So, basically, what happens is when there's stainless steel touching aluminium, 
uh, the aluminium will start sacrificing itself and, and corroding away. It's the same sort of principle as the um, little anodes um, on the back of your outboard, for example. Uh, electrolysis uh, is caused specifically by uh, something electrical, like an electrical field um, with current going through it, touching onto the aluminium. So let's say you have a, a powered wire that's come loose or, or something power that's touching onto your hull somewhere directly. And then the pitting is really caused by uh, water or moisture sitting in, uh, in your boat uh, in areas that basically shouldn't be. So that, oh look, they're, they're the main causes, they're probably not the only causes. Um, but that, again, just based on my own experience, there's probably plenty of other causes. Now, how to prevent um, these from happening? Because prevention is ultimately, it's better than cure. Uh, prevention here is very, very important because, um, we'll talk about that in a minute, but anyway. Okay, the oxidation, um, you really, you can't really prevent it to be honest. And it is actually important and it is just really a way of the aluminium um, creating a protective coating uh, for itself. So you can't really prevent it, which means your plate alloy boat is not gonna look new and beautiful forever. Now, I've seen some people go and get, um, you know, attachments on drills and things and get in the back of their boat and, you know, some sort of wire brush and, and take it all off and make it look brand new again. And I'm telling you now, you absolutely should not do that. Never do that because it removes um, the protective barrier uh, that has um, formed itself on that surface. And if you remove that barrier, the process needs to start all over again and it can actually cause uh, detrimental impacts. So oxidation, just leave it, uh, keep an eye on it. It is okay. Um, if you are going to try and remove it, um, try not to go too extreme is all I would say. But uh, yeah, it, it's one of those ones that um, I, I wouldn't be too worried about. Now the galvanic, um, corrosion is more of a worry, okay, because it can cause, you know, serious kind of damage in localised areas to the point where it can eat all the way through your hull or whatever. So, the main thing is there is to go over your boat, particularly near any areas that it's occurred, and um, make sure there's absolutely, you're certain there's no steel, no stainless steel, no other metals apart from aluminium touching the aluminium. So, that's how you prevent that. Uh, electrolysis, again, pretty simple. Um, try and locate any electrical faults, basically see if there's any current touching onto the hull anywhere. Loose wires, dodgy switches. Um, so that's how you can basically uh, prevent that. Um, and the pitting, now this is one that I think most people potentially don't know about or how to how to prevent it. Um, these little pin um, sort of dot holes that that form. Um, basically you want to keep your boat very, very dry after you use it. And I'm talking even from fresh water. So you do not want fresh water sitting in your boat basically anywhere uh, for long periods of time. So you don't want moisture. Moisture's bad but water sitting anywhere is even worse, even if, if it is fresh water. And look, let's face it, none of our boats sit perfectly level, etc. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll park our boats with the nose up, which is great, water runs out the back, but if your boat isn't perfectly level, what it will mean is water will quite often sit in one of the back um, corners, which is a really, really bad situation. So the bottom line is you should cover your boats up um, keep them as dry as possible, then after usage you should actually get in and dry them out and make sure no water sits in there because ultimately uh, moisture, excessive moisture and water will cause um, the pitting and you know like I said it's these tiny little um, pinholes and the really bad thing about um, pitting I would say is once it starts you kind of can't ever stop it um, which is kind of similar to 
many of the forms of corrosion on aluminium boats. That's why prevention is so incredibly important. Um, the pitting is, is one of the bad ones. Um, all right, what can you do about it? So oxidation, as I've said, um, I recommend you don't do anything about it. You actually don't clean it, you leave it, and you just accept it. Um, galvanic corrosion, um, electrolysis, once it's, it's formed, um, it depends how severe it is. Uh, obviously, you can try and clean it off, uh, wire brushes, scrape it off, etc. Um, if the electrolysis damages your paint, clean it off, sand it back, um, repaint, etc. And that should go okay. Um, if it's to the point where it's, it's almost caused holes, and this goes with the pitting as well, if it's almost caused a hole in your hull, um, now... The problem with alloy is it's very hard to weld, okay? So a lot of these plate alloy boats, when they have corrosion damage and holes in them, a lot of the time the plate isn't actually thick enough, or in pressed alloy, I should say, to actually weld it. And it's a real problem. Um, and what you'll find is, this may sound absolutely ridiculous, but a recommended fix for a lot of these small pitting holes in older boats is literally just to use Araldite over the hull because welding uh, is not possible. If the plate is thick enough, I think, you know, you want it to be something like three mil or more. I think you you could be able to weld these holes. Um, but particular with pitting, if a boat, if a plate boat hasn't been maintained properly, it can have pitting virtually all over the boat, okay? Um, and a lot of these plate boats aren't maintained properly. Now, like you'll see, for example, you'll see project boats on the market, like seven meter plate boat, 20 years old, 30 years old, make perfect projects, selling off, lost interest. Be very, very skeptical of old plate boats. I'm being serious because most of them for sale have got corrosion problems. Galvanic, electrolysis, pitting, uh, you name it, a combination of all of them. And it is incredibly hard to fix repair um, and you want to basically avoid it at all costs so um, avoid buying a boat that's got it firstly so if you're looking at secondhand plate market be very very careful i've seen um, boats with really bad corrosion in in name brands okay from as young as five years so five years even 10 years old and the boat is well and truly uh, on its way out so plate boats believe it or not do not last forever um, they are susceptible to the environment. So, whereas a fiberglass boat, you can kind of repair transoms, floors, re-fiberglass, et cetera, a plate boat can be much more difficult to repair. And in many cases, they can't properly be repaired because they can't be re-welded and things like that. So, please be very careful buying secondhand boats. Um, and if you're gonna buy a new aluminum boat, be very careful how you maintain your boat. Now, um, another thing that, uh, just throwing it out there, I don't know how to pronounce it, but the, the Nihilic, Nihilic uh, coating that some brands offer, um, I really do like this product. I think it keeps your aluminium in really, really good shape, um, much better than just being bare aluminium. So, I don't know how other people feel about it, but, you know, I've seen a bunch of these boats and... The boats that have that coating just seem to hold up a hell of a lot better uh, over time. So I'm talking like five, 10 years, etc. So if I was buying a new plate boat, I'd definitely be looking for a boat uh, manufacturer that offers that. Now it's not perfect. You do need to be extremely careful with it. Um, any sort of oils, fuel that come in contact with it will damage it and discolor it. Even sunscreen will literally damage it and discolor it. So it's not the perfect solution. You have to be very careful. Again, it won't look new forever. Um, you'll drop some sunscreen on there and you'll be like, ah, oh, this sucks. But um, overall, I do think it is a, is a better alternative than having absolute bare alloy. So um, look, the other thing as well is, um, and I'm gonna throw this out there, okay, I, I genuinely don't have any evidence, so take this with a grain of salt, but um, I do think that different manufacturers use different qualities of alloy, um, and some use cheaper imported alloy. 
uh, cheaper alloy than others and I see the way these these plate boats age over time and you can kind of tell who's using the better alloy but again I don't have anything to, to back that up I've had people informally tell me this and reach out and tell me some companies are buying cheap recycled alloy uh, from China for example some companies um, are getting good quality stuff whatever and um, I haven't delved into it, I don't have the evidence, but I, I am seeing that, okay? But I don't want to say which companies because I don't want to get myself uh, in hot water uh, without the evidence, but I do think there is a difference, okay, between the boat builders. So look, um, in concluding, uh, I, I hope that has uh, educated you somewhat or at a very minimum, um, it has sort of opened your eyes to look into this topic deeper and get some more information because um, plate alloy boats and alloy boats definitely don't last forever and they needed to be treated very, very carefully. Um, if I was buying secondhand plate, I'd be very, very careful. I'd check the boat out thoroughly. I'd be asking myself, why is this person selling? Uh, if I was buying new, I'd be looking for that coating, like I said, and um, I'd probably be buying from a more premium uh, manufacturer just to get a better quality uh, of alloy. But um, look, if you do own a plate boat, please go out and have a close look at it. Um, keep it dry. Try and prevent any of those issues. Stay on top of it. And uh, yeah, all the best.